Shabbat Shalom, my friends. Well, do you hear them? Do we hear the sounds of the shofar, those blasts of the ancient ram's horn? Once again, they have entered our lives as scheduled, right on time. Of course, it won't be quite the same this year. Nothing is, actually. For many Jews who are traditionally observant, it is painfully true that the only sounds that they might be hearing right now are the sounds of silence. And for all of us gathering in person to hear the cacophonous shvarim, truah, tekiah, will only be possible in the most limited of circumstances. But we can hear them online or live streamed every day, carrying us on sound waves of memory and soul searching directly from now into Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur until finally we reach the last spine-tiggling Tikiagadola that ends the Ne'ila service. This year, this year, we might even hear shofarot on street corners, in public parks, from front porches, and even from apartment balconies. It's that time of the year again. Okay, I know, it will be different, frustratingly different, but we're going to make it work in Bray Ra. There's, there's no other option. Thursday was the last day of the month of Av. Friday was the first day of the last month of the Hebrew calendar Elul. We sounded the shofar on the last day of Av as practice for sounding it as required on the first day of Elul. Pretty simple. Last day of the, last, the second last month, we sounded it. Get ready, first day of the last month, we're supposed to sound it for most of that month leading up to Rosh Hashanah. Practice is important. Nothing is going to be the same as it was a year ago, we know that. But we have to get ready. Then I know rabbis all across the country, cantors all across the country, are doing magnificently in getting ready to provide for us a wonderful experience. In Brera, we have no other option. Okay, our sedra this week is Shoftim, Deuteronomy 16, verses 18 and following. All of Deuteronomy comprises one long, incredibly enriching and challenging final sermon of Moses to the Israelites at the very end of the 40 years journey. Now, let's be fair. Final words have always fascinated us. Those final words are so important that sometimes they're kind of invented. They're made out of whole cloth. For example, one of the really good examples, Joseph Trumpeldor, Yosef Trumpeldor, one of the great heroes for who fought for an independent Jewish state, was said to have uttered these words after he was fatally shot. It is nothing, it is good to die for our country. Great words, except it turns out that those probably were not his final words, it doesn't matter, they still ended up etched into history. We love final words. There have even been anthologies created of the final words of those whom others consider to be important one way or another. The great hero of social justice, Congressman John Lewis of truly blessed memory, dictated out a magnificent ethical will even as his death was drawing very close. He put his values before us and made clear why our battle for social justice is only just beginning. He said, 
ordinary people with extraordinary vision can redeem the soul of America by getting in what I call good trouble, necessary trouble. The vote is the most powerful nonviolent change agent you have in a democratic society. You must use it because it is not guaranteed, and John Lewis concluded, you can lose it, close quote. Moses begins this week by the following concerns. Strengthening his demand that a legal system be set up that will be free of bribery, coercion, and self-interest. Therefore, have no fewer than two witnesses in a capital case. Therefore, learn to evaluate not just the criminal act, but the motivations that went behind them. Therefore, treat perjury with great severity. Therefore, you must find a way to apply justice and humanity even in the midst of a war. And ways must also be found to exempt from warfare those who would be eligible for what we today would call deferrals. And therefore, remember that acts of injustice are not only the responsibility of the perpetrator, but society as a whole bears a share of that burden of guilt as well. Great stuff. But such a legal system, Moses, can only be effective in a land over which a just and moral government holds sway. Morality and justice in a government must flow from the very head of that government. In one of the most impressive of all of the meets vote, and it's my opinion, I think one of the most impressive of all the meets vote, a new king is commanded to copy out Mishneh HaTorah Hazot. Mishneh Torah, a copy of the Torah in Greek Deuteronomy. This is the very sentence from which the authors of the Septuagint derive their name for the fifth and final book of the Torah. It's right there. A Mishneh Torah, a copy of the Torah, is to be prepared. Deuteronomy, Mishneh Torah, stays with us forever. Sure, the king is supposed to make his own copy of the Torah, Mishnah Torah, a copy of his own, of the Torah. But it's not meant to be wrote homework. Copy out a safer Torah for yourself, O no king, and then keep that copy next to you every single day of your reign and study it, and study it every day. Only then will a king be motivated to act justly. And only then, with the king, the ruler, the top of government acting justly, then the court system can function and the lives of the people will be good. Moses, the Cedra. Not every rule in our Cedra is in itself just and moral. We can't pretend that things are otherwise. We know that we've studied Torah together. For example, even while the text in a burst of praiseworthy ecological and environmental sensibility demands that trees not be cut down needlessly around a city that's in, set under siege. The trees aren't our enemies. So does the text also preach eternal warfare against six neighboring tribal countries. 
It's tough. Nevertheless, in summary, two overriding principles stand out here in the Sedra Shoftim. First, Dam Naki. Innocent blood must never be shed. Dam Naki. Blood is life. Blood is that which unifies all of humankind. Secondly, lying undermines any possibility of just courts and just government. Lying in court, if proven, is to bring upon the liar the identical punishment that the innocent accused would have received. And that could be really steep. And the Israelites were put on notice, listen to this, that enemy nations, foreign countries, enemy nations will try to demoralize and corrupt our country by peddling lies and by corruption. That's in the Torah from what? 25, 26, 2700 years ago? Such purveyors of lies peddled by enemy agents are viewed as a major existential threat and they must be handled severely by the courts. Moses, final speech. The book of Ecclesiastes, Kohelet warns us that in chadash tachat hashamesh, nothing new under the sun. If we have our highest courts made vulnerable to political machinations, the loss to our country will be immeasurable. Tzedek, tzedek, tirdof, go out and pursue justice. The pursuit of justice must never be corrupted by personal concerns or by politically driven motives. And political leaders must never be allowed to believe that they are above the law or that they are the law. Copy out a Sefer Torah, Mishnah Torah, keep it by your side, study it always. Above all else, Liars, foreign or domestic, must be cut out of the body politic. Okay, that's it for today. The shofar out sounds during the month of Elul, this month now, are meant to call us to prepare for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, to remind us not only of our personal shortcomings, and they are many, but of the shortcomings of our society as well. They too are many. Our personal and collective work of repentance and repair is sacred work. And this is the month when repairing our world and repairing ourselves must begin. Elo, Anila Dodi Vidodi Li, it's a time of love. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. A loving, caring, careful preparation for the Amim Noraim. Have a great Shabbat. Have a great Shabbat, my friends. And let's see each other next week. Shabbat Shalom.